All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Chang, and I'm a postdoc working with Arshad Kudrali, who is the PI of this NSF grant, uh, which is called Predicting Coronavirus Disease Impact with Multiscale Contact and Transmission Mitigation. And this talk um, is just going to be an overview of all the work that we have been doing in the past, past year, actually. Um, and it's really broken down into two different teams. So we have this physics team of excellent uh, undergraduate, undergraduate and graduate physics majors at, here at Clark University. And we have a medicine team um, made up of doctors and um, nurses and uh, respiratory health practitioners as well from the University of Massachusetts uh, Medical School Bay State. Um, and in this um, image below, you can see that there's a, uh, our artificial sneeze um, with a long exposure, which we'll talk about more later on. Uh, so the main point of this grant initially was is to develop a stochastic model to predict how uh, the coronavirus spreads from two different populations. So if you imagine here, this is uh, Boston, for example, and over here, this is Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, then uh, we, we, we we're trying to figure out how the coronavirus or how any disease spreads from one population to another. And as we were developing these models, we started to, we, we started to realize we can plug in pretty much any parameter we wanted um, to predict how, or to match how the uh, coronavirus has spread based on past outcomes. Um, but that really got us thinking, what are some of the uh, mechanisms for these parameters? And uh, really, how can we use fluid dynamics and soft matter physics to help predict future outcomes? And so we went about this by developing some, um, some experiments, some physical modeling to determine the spatial temporal dispersal of mucosalivary droplets. So over here, we have an artificial sneeze, the evolution of our artificial sneeze cloud uh, over time, and which was matched with human sneezes um, so it was matched with human sneezes in literature. And really what we're interested in doing is trying to determine how these sneeze droplets would spread depending on uh, exhalation strength, mucus rheology, um, and also the different mitigation strategies we can employ to uh, reduce the dispersal of mucus salivary droplets. And really this is important because we need to develop a, a systematic measurements of uh, the droplet dispersal uh, travel distances and how long it, they, the droplets stay in the air and also the evaporation rates as a size of the droplet, uh, as a function of the uh, droplet size distribution in order to really fully characterize the transmission rates in our stochastic model. And this is really important because we know that inhalation of these virus-laden droplets is the main mode of transmission for COVID-19 spreading. Um, and it's also very important for various other um, diseases that are transmitted by uh, inhalation of other people's um, exhalations, uh, such as tuberculosis and influenza. So this has importance for future pandemics and future health crises as well. So one of the first things we did was really look at the spatial dispersal. For example, how far do the droplets go and where do they end up landing? So uh, one of the key questions we're interested in is, how, is also how does the rheology of the fluid affect the dispersal patterns? So here we have simply just water being uh, exhaled outwards. And then as we increase the mucin concentration, uh, basically the stickiness and the um, of the fluid, um, we start to see different dispersal patterns. And uh, one of the key features is that as you increase the mucin level to someone who is uh, relatively unhealthy, then we start to see narrower uh, lobes or narrower dispersal patterns, but the droplets travel a much further distance. So what we start to, and another thing you might notice is that uh, the number of large droplets, these speckles that kind of look like stars, uh, the number of these uh, large droplets start to increase as well once you start reaching higher mucin concentrations. And we've also started looking at the uh, temporal dispersal. In other words, how long do they stay in the air? Uh, so if we look at the uh, 
falling speed of a sneeze cloud versus the size of the cloud, um, we can see these uh, trends that occur and we can model these quite accurately as well. And you can find more information in this paper that we published back in 20, October 2020. Uh, furthermore, we've been collaborating with doctors at UMass Medical, Medical Hospital to determine how uh, aerosols are escaping from these um, oxygenation, oxygenation devices. Uh, for example, here you have a nasal cannula, which is these uh, tubes that go into your nose. And um, we put this onto a medical mannequin and we show that the aerosols can travel uh, quite a distance. So you can see, imagine if there is a healthcare worker standing right above this uh, patient, then they would get uh, direct, uh, direct exposure to the, the aerosols. But just by placing, a, uh, um, by placing this a mask over the patient, we can reduce and redirect the, the aerosols. Uh, furthermore, we have a simple oxygen mask, which, uh, which sprays the aerosols in two directions. Um, and then uh, once again, we placed a uh, mask over the simple O2 mask to redirect the aerosols. So overall, uh, we, we were trying to use fluid dynamics and soft matter physics to plug plug in per, as parameters to improve these transmission rate models for, um, for disease transmissions. Uh, and thank you for your time. And I'll be happy to answer any questions.